and welcome to episode number 53 of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. I'm Lisbeth, your host, and this is a podcast which is all about knitting. I guess it's all about knitting today. Uh, and spinning, actually. So, yeah, this intro is, is still a mess, you guys. You will have to suffer through. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me, and uh, I hope you guys had a lovely week, and uh, it really means a lot that you take some time and spend it with me, uh, well, chatting here. So what I've been up to, well, I, I'm almost ashamed to say, because I've been to another fiber event in the Netherlands, would I, which I did not announce, because my health has not been particularly great, but good enough still. Uh, I do have a date for my surgery, though, in two weeks time, which means that next week I will probably still be podcasting. I'm not sure if there will be one in two weeks time. And I'm not sure how soon afterwards I will feel like podcasting uh, again. So, um, yeah, podcasting is not my number one priority when I'm uh, in a hospital situation. Anyway, <laughs> for now, there's knitting. So uh, let, let's just focus on what I've been doing this week. Well, I probably should have kept a progress marker in my project of last week. But you will have seen that I was knitting on this pair of socks. And it is now finished and I can't remember where I was last week, but a pair of finish, finished socks for my boyfriend and he is really happy with these socks and I really like how they turned out. I, I really like the way the heel looks uh, with the heel flap also in black that I did not have to weave in an additional end because I could just continue in a round again after the heel flap. The heel flap is still knitted back and forth. In my pattern I, I used a Liesl's vanilla sock pattern which is on Revelry. It's my own design so I, I never really bother to take the pattern with me and I always vary a little bit with the stitch count if I like to do so. I don't always. But uh, yeah. So uh, but, but the pattern does describe what I'm doing. Anyway so this time I altered it in the sense that I used more colors because obviously it has contrasting heels, cuffs and toes and I was at a fiber event earlier today and I've seen some sock blockers. Did I buy them? No. Should I have bought some? Probably yes, <laughs> but well I didn't. Anyway, so here's the socks and I feel like you can still see that it's a sock. So. I'm, I'm really happy with them and my boyfriend has tried them on and they fit so uh, he's going to have them but not until tomorrow even though they were finished I think two days ago and by finished I mean like having all the ends woven in kind of finished which is usually the, something that can take a few weeks after I finish knitting a pair of socks but yeah I, I managed to finish them and you guys, I know why I don't usually use contrasting colors for heels, tough, heel, heels, tufts, and coat. No, toes, heels, and cuffs. Yeah, that's the right words. Anyway, uh, oh my words, they are failing me. Anyway, so I I know why I don't usually do that because I don't like weaving in ends and by doing something that looks as simple as this it just gives you six extra ends to weave in on a pair of socks which are completely unnecessary in my opinion but for this yarn i i really wanted to use uh, a yarn with uh, nylon in the toes and in the heels especially because the rest of the sock doesn't contain any nylon it's i think superwash merino with donegal nets i'm not really sure if it's a merino i think it is but it's uh, yarn by Motti and the Squid and uh, it's their orange underwing colorway and uh, black. I looked up for last week's show notes what kind of yarn it is and I already got again. I think it's... No, it's not Opal. Shopu. Shopu Admiral. Yeah, I think it's Shopu Admiral. So it's just a basic sock yarn. I think it's... Uh, German brand and plain black and you guys my fingers have been black for as long as I've been knitting with it it was quite a disaster so I hope that these socks are going to stay pretty I did not wash them yet 
and I consider uh, like trying to dip like mm -hmm. just the toes and the heel and, and, and the cuff in it like, like this and then hold it <laughs> like there so, somehow, maybe uh, use some pins to, you know, keep the rest of the fabric out of the water to make sure that uh, all the excess dye, which obviously came to my hand, so I'm fearing that it will also still be in the yarn and in the wool fabric, yeah, to make sure that they stay pretty. The rest of the orange doesn't all become grayish black. So that's one project and my boyfriend has his birthday tomorrow so he will receive his socks tomorrow for his birthday and tomorrow is the 6th of April. I'm recording Monday early again. Um, so just so you guys know, not that it really matters I guess if I podcast a day in advance or or on the same day, I, I don't think it matters that much. Anyway, so a pair of socks for my boyfriend and he will love them. Then he wants more than just a pair of socks. He actually really wants some new gamer gloves because I've knit him a pair of gamer gloves and they're just out of reach, but I'm going to pick them up anyway. I knit him a pair of fingerless mitts, which I call gamer gloves for him, which he uses behind the computer. And here they are, and they're knit out of 100% alpaca. And uh, yeah. Uh, you can see that they have been used. <laughs> let's, let's just call it that way. I've washed them several times, but I think most of the this kind of sizzling felting, something happened just because uh, he has been using them a lot. And uh, you can kind of see that this is uh, the right hand where he holds his mouse, and this is the one he uses on the keyboard. So this one has definitely worn more than the other one, which I think is quite funny to see. Anyway, so... Yeah, um, the, the back side of the hand obviously does not, um, you know, ha ha run into as much friction, so they are a lot cleaner hmm. and a bit of fluff. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, I could probably try to get some of the felting bits off these gloves, but honestly, I don't think there's any point because my boyfriend will keep on using them. And he uses them every day, so it's even hard to wash them sometimes. Even though they have been smelling sweaty at some point. So I, I just stole them from him and forced myself to wash them because it, it was getting kind of gross. Anyway, um, but he loves using them too much to for me to be allowed to wash them. So that's a good time. But he wants something similar to this. So in Scotland, I purchased some yarn from Katty Snits in Edinburgh. And it was this yarn, which I have conveniently lost the labels of. And it's JC Rennie and Co. And I think this color is azure and this one is winter white. I guess by the name she would have guessed which one is which. Anyway, so he wants some gaming gloves and you can see that the threads are tangling down. So I started making him some. Yeah, but I quickly realized that they would never be finished before his birthday and also I kind of lack the inspiration to come up with a pattern. Yeah, I know that I could just go on Ravelry or look at any of my books because I have some books on knitting colorwork mittens. But did I do that? No, I didn't. I just felt inspirationless and I really needed an easy knit this week. Because of the surgery that's coming up, I kind of want to be like in a very good shape. So I've been trying to exercise a bit more and uh, a lot of my exercising just involves some stepping exercises. It's not on the treadmill, but on the wee balance board that you step on and off. But I think it's kind of the same thing, but it's kind of brainless in place motion. So it's perfect for knitting, but not for co color work knitting because it's a bit too involved. For color work I like to sit down and knit. And I can sit down in a train and knit, but I can't sit down while I'm exercising, obviously. Anyway, so I have cast on a new pair of socks and these are another pair of vanilla socks for him out of the yarn from House of Alamode in the Twin Peaks colorway. And I think it's something like house fingering yarn. It's the base. And so it's just a sock yarn, a uh, high twist uh, sock yarn. And I love the stitch definition of it. I, I'm not sure uh, to extend it captures, but I, I really, really like the look of this. And the green color is gorgeous. 
and I know that last week I, I may have mentioned something like a color like this I feel like I could dye myself well I've seen some attempts to make something well I think it, there were attempts to make something similar to this but they were nowhere near as, as gorgeous as this deep green color which my boyfriend obviously fell in love with so yeah i may need to refocus some of my words on that i don't think it's that easy or maybe people are attempting something different but then uh, still i like this a lot better so i yeah i am really thrilled with with how how lovely this feels in the hands and as a knitted fabric even though i'm knitting it on quite tiny needles i've taken to knitting on my double zero or 1.75 uh, millimeter uh, needles for socks i don't know exactly why i made this switch i think it's because of the socks that i knit for the rain of elena's crafts she made the biscuit socks pattern and she called for a specific gauge and i was measuring my gauge and i found out that i needed to knit at this needle size to get that gauge i think she re recommends like us one and a half or 2.5 millimeter needles to get that gauge well apparently i'm a loose knitter uh, so i i needed smaller uh, needles to obtain that gauge and i i quite like it i and especially with a yarn that is this precious i just want to have a tighter gauge to make sure that these socks will actually last very long because well let's just make our money worthwhile i guess and our time in knitting it so uh, yeah that's uh, my project that I'm currently working on and there's one more knitting project that I've been giving some love and it is a pair of socks who would have guessed because apparently all I ever need is socks except for an attempt at mittens which I <laughs> put aside quite quickly this week so hmm might need to to rethink what I do with my life if I only knit socks and uh, well here's uh, one of my project bags and in it is my pair of fishy socks and i have some exciting progress on it not that it really looks that exciting because i'm on the heel and i think i might already have been on the heel and i've been doing some weird kind of increases in the heel but i i just loved the fit of this this heel it, it made the color work look so nice so i'm really glad that the other sock i will only have to rip back until like here before i start uh, the heel increases and that the rest of the sock uh, will just turn out lovely so um yeah once i get the i'm not sure no it's not after i finish the green socks because the green socks are my easy knit and this is the more intricate knit so um yeah I don't know <laughs> but uh, it, it really gives me some courage to to continue knitting on it and I only just finished this part of the sock yesterday evening so I have not really had any time to knit on it anymore because today I took the train to Tilburg to go to Knit a Knot uh, which is a fiber event in the Netherlands so yeah I have not really been, had much time to knit on it anymore and the rest of the time that I've been at home went into my spinning project and I have I, I think I may have picked up the drop spindle a few times again this week but I'm not 100% sure if I did that but I'm really sure that I have been spinning this week and I, I think I will leave the drop spindle project uh, for some other time to show you because I don't think there's any significant progress since the last time but uh, yeah, I did finish uh, spinning these two singles from um, these were from a top from Golden Fleece Studio which is an Etsy store uh, and it's from the Netherlands so I, I kind of like uh, buying from the Netherlands and I will get into that a little bit more uh, later today but uh, yeah and also these colors are so so nice and golden and this is what's going to be the other ply this came from a bat and this was a fire uh, a fiber pack with some um, which consisted of three uh, separate pieces of top so there's actually two colors of the the golden brownish color so there's one that's 
slightly more yellowish and one that's slightly more orangey and I'm not really sure if I can point it out uh, in here and there's the white top and the, the, the brown one golden brown ones they were both 100% uh, merino I believe super wash but I'm not 100% sure on that one and the white one was merino with silk I'm not really kind of not really sure what kind of silk and there was this fire star a bit that i chose to spun through this ply as well so i um i think all of these contents are also present in this bat but they were divided slightly different and there's a, a more dark brown in in here but i'm i think this is going to be lovely and the bat i split into four parts so the color is repeating throughout so we kind of go from this color on the top to the color on the bottom and um, that kind of happens four times in this single if I manage to, <laughs> to keep the yarn in place not or the fiber in place I'm not really sure what's that and apparently there's some red in here <laughs> had not noticed that before but apparently it's there <laughs> so uh, yeah we will see how this turns out and I'm, I'm excited to apply these together and see what kind of yarn I get um, this was quite an interesting spin because I had to do a lot of pre-drafting for the fibers to work because I used uh, roving which was a uh, pretty standard size I guess for uh, a roving but I really really split it up into like pencil roving I think to make sure that for this one this single because this is a single it, it kind of looks barber poly plied but that's because I've held um, three colors of ply plus a little bit of fire start together throughout the skein so I'm pretty sure that there's bits where I have failed to capture all of the colors at the same time but yeah it, it should be kind of even throughout the project I, I know it's not but that's the joy of hand spun it's it's not perfect it's got some character <laughs> yeah um, but it was a very interesting spin because this uh, really required some more preparation whereas this bat I just split up in into four pieces and, and, and kept going. So this one, uh, I think just a preparation for a small bit took me about as much time as just spinning through a quarter uh, of the bat. I quite liked uh, spinning from a bat actually. I'd never tried that on the wheel before. So the first bat I've spun from is actually the, the one that I'm currently using on my spindle. But um, yeah, it was kind of holding back on trying that and I don't really know why because I now know that I quite enjoyed just spinning from a bat actually so yeah, I may have to try that again in the future because I quite enjoyed it. Did I do something with that on, on the fiber event today? No, 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 I, I, I don't think about those kind of things. <laughs> Not until I realized that I maybe should have done something else but uh, I don't think there were many bats in it. I don't know. I actually have not been looking for bats, <laughs> so there might have been. There might have been. So I said that I was going to leave it for next time to show you guys, but I, I have my spindle right here, and I have some confession to make because last week I dropped my spindle and I kind of lost a bit. So a sharp of this lovely spindle, it, um, it fell off. But this week I got glue and I glued it together again. So it's a, it's a, well, circular spin uh, again. It was still usable for, uh, when uh, the little scarf was off, but I, I like it better now that it's fixed again. And the lesson that I learned, well, I do have the, these carpets in some places in my house, but most of it's wooden floor. So. But if I am going to spin again with my drop spindle, do it above a softer background and not just drop it on the wooden floor because one is probably going to make holes in my floor at some point and two of my spindles might break and I think, well, there's no 100% guarantee of course that it won't break if you drop it on carpet but I feel like the chances are smaller because it's a softer landing for <laughs> your drop spindle. Anyway, I still love this spindle and I think it's just because I treated it badly that it, it broke. But yeah, I was a little bit disappointed that it happened, but uh, yeah, 
I'm really happy that it's fixed again. And I look forward to spinning the rest of the bat because the yarn from Spin City is lovely. So I think I've uh, talked you through all the projects that I've been working on this week, but well, except that I've been doing some sewing preparations, but I've not actually been sewing. So I don't think it's particularly interesting to look at square pieces of fabric that are cut out to, to become uh, project bags at some point. But uh, I told you that I went to a fiber event and yesterday I saw on Instagram that Spinsball was there again. So uh, I've been to this fabric fair called Knit and Knot uh, before and I purchased the yarn for this cardigan that I'm wearing today um, from Spinsball I think about two years ago. I think last October it was a year ago so maybe one and a half year ago I purchased this fiber and it's, uh, well it were it, they came in four braids and two of them were 100% BFL and the other two were 100% uh, merino so I used one ply of merino together with one ply of BFL and I spun this the yarn for this cardigan and this cardigan is a uh, the Dusala cardigan by Also Tricosa, but I've been boring you to tears about it, I think, uh, in the previous uh, episodes because I the, the pink cardigan uh, that I've recently knit is the same pattern but uh, with the obvious addition of the lace from the Japanese knitting stitch part. So I went to uh, the fiber event today and of course I knew that Spinsball was coming so I said I already mentioned on Instagram to her, oh, I will check out your booth tomorrow, which is now today, obviously, and I did. So I went to check out her booth today and yeah, I purchased some more hand dyed, hand, hand reverbs, which is Dutch for hand dyed. And uh, this is 100% uh, BFL again, and I think this one is also 100% BFL, so one is slightly heavier than the other, but they're both about 100 grams, so I think one is 100 and the other 110. And uh, I think I'm going to knit myself a cardigan out of these colors. Why pink again? Well, because they had pink, <laughs> and because I love it, and I've been wearing a lot of pink cardigans, because this is kind of pink, what I'm wearing today, and uh, you've obviously seen my other the solid cardigan, which also happened to be pink. Is pink my color? Well, possibly. Well, <laughs> I say teal or blue is more of my color, but this this looks exciting as well. Um, two braids is probably not going to be enough to uh, make me a cardigan, so I have also purchased some blue face lesser, which is just plain white. And I have two of these bags, which are going to make a terrible noise on the podcast because it's in plastic, but I'm going to keep it in a plastic anyway. So I will make one ply out of this and one ply out of this and then just ply them together and I will get a crazy barber pole, but I think it will be uh, a nice thing to make me another cardigan or maybe a sweater, I don't know. We will see what it's going to be. They also had a black blue faced Lester, and I was considering using that, but I'm not really sure if I would wear a cardigan with black and a rainbow. I'm not I'm not one hundred percent sure. So I got this from Spinsball and I also got a sock blend and this is obviously also still plain white and it's BFL nylon and I'm planning to dye this first and then spin it and i'm not really sure how that's gonna work out but we will see i'm, I'm really curious to to try out dyeing on um on a rolling before i spin it <laughs> i'm i'm kind of afraid that i will felt it entirely but we will see what happens and i'm, I'm really quite curious to as to what it's going to be like so that's some exciting projects for the future. Did I need another sweater's quantity of, uh, worth of fiber to spin? Probably not. Did I buy it? Yes, I did. <laughs> anyway, so that's not all I've treated myself to today. But let's first get a sip of tea. So apart from the spinning additions to my stash, I've also purchased some yarn. 
Did I need more yarn? No, but I feel like I've been pretty good uh, with knitting from my Edinburgh haul because, or my Scotland haul because I've at least cast on at least uh, four skeins out of the six that I purchased there, so that's good. I obviously also purchased a lot of fiber to spin with. Did I cast all of that on? No, <laughs> but um, well, you should enjoy your fiber events for a while, I guess. So, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to enjoy this one for a very long time because I purchased something that, I, that will last for, uh, well, a very long time. So I purchased uh, one skein of sock yarn because you do, you, you need a pair of, well, a gorgeous skein of sock yarn from every fiber event that you ever go to, <laughs> I feel like. So this is from uh, Schaap en Draak, uh, which means uh, sheep and dragon in Dutch. And uh, it's a beautiful skein with a, a rainbow and just some plain gray. So I imagine it's going to be mostly gray with uh, this stripe of a rainbow through it every now and then. And then well, apparently it's going to be more of a rainbow than I thought. So I think it's going to be pretty much like an alternating thing between a, a gray row and a rainbow row and a gray row and a rainbow row. It's going to be beautiful but I I am actually kind of planning to try and dye some self striping yarn so I and I wanted to know what this would knit up like and uh, before I go through the entire effort of trying to dye that myself I thought I see so many of these lovely skeins and I want one I, I saw some dyed in a very similar way in Edinburgh as well and I kind of regretted not having purchased one, even though I don't think this is particularly my color comfort zone. Although I, I do love gray and oh, well, you've seen me in a rainbow before as well. So maybe this is my color comfort zone. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, and it's going to be for socks anyway. So I don't really care that much about colors. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious what this is going to turn out like. And if I like the look of it, I might try dyeing something kind of like this. Uh, I wouldn't say copy because what's the point in copying what someone else already makes? And, uh, except if you just want to use it for yourself, obviously. Um, I don't like just copying someone else's work, but sometimes some other people are just really inspiring. So <laughs> um, I, I, you shouldn't feel bad for, for getting inspired to do something remotely similar to something that already exists, I guess. Anyway, so uh, yeah, this is uh, a skein of yarn that I hope to knit from soon and is going to be for me because I don't think my boyfriend will like <laughs> socks like this. And even if he did, I like them too much. <laughs> so this is just going to go on my pile of sock yarns that are very pretty and that I kind of need to knit from. And I should have realized that when I was unfolding this game that I would not get the label on anymore. <laughs> Did I do that? No. So it's going to be a bit of a struggle and it's not going to look very neat for a while. But maybe we'll fix that and maybe not. I don't really care actually. So this is the top that. The sock drag, so the sock dragon uh, wool. I'm not sure if that's the color or if it's their base. Because it says it's a BFL nylon uh, sock blend, but it doesn't say really if this is the color or not. I'm not really sure. I didn't look at uh, the names sort of colorways. I'm not really sure if she names colorways. She does not have an... Well, I, there seems to be a, a website here, but I don't think that she sells the yarn on her website. I'm not 100% sure. She said that she only did events and not very often. So, uh, but it's gorgeous. So I'm, I'm really happy with this yarn. Anyway. Uh, there's some other yarn that I'm really, really, really happy with uh, that I purchased today. And this is some Shetland wool and I have purchased it in three colors and I think these are just the natural colors of the sheep. And this is from Wools of Holland and it's their Shetland two ply. 
I think I have all the labels upside down, but I, I guess it doesn't really matter. So it's a, a yarn with 230 meters per 50 grams, so it, it's really a, a lot of yardage for, uh, for just 50 grams, actually. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I just love to have these natural colors go together. I feel like all the natural sheep colors go to weather, together very well. But I know that these sheep are kept in the Netherlands and I talked to uh, Saskia before of Wolves of uh, Holland and uh, hi Ingrid, uh, I, <laughs> the other person in the booth uh, is a viewer of this podcast. So it was really a lovely chat I had there at our booth. and. Uh, I know that my local yarn shop is probably going to carry this wool at some point in the future if she finally makes an order. Sometimes that takes a while with her. I um, feel like she has a lot on her plate most of the time, so um, she can be a bit slow in things. And sometimes suppliers are slow, but in this case I, I think it might be my local yarn shop. I don't know. Anyway, I hope that this is going to be accessible through my local yarn shop at, at some point in the future, but for now it's just gorgeous to have some sheep that I know that are treated well in the Netherlands and I've heard uh, Saskia talk about the sheep before and how they imported new Shetland sheep to have some new blood to, to keep the bloodlines uh, okay of the sheep and uh, just what they do to protect their sheep it's, it's beautiful and well it's just really nice to hear about sheep and then get to use the, the final product. So this is just the Shetland uh, sheep that they have, but they also have the Kempisch Heiderschaf. I don't know how you would say Kempisch in, in, in Dutch, because Kempisch, Kempisch Heiderschaf, but I think it's just from the Kempe and it also says Kempe wool. So to me, you know, this, this word, Schaap, the, the schaap is how it's pronounced. I know that it's difficult for people uh, who don't speak Dutch, probably. But uh, yeah, so this is a Dutch breed and the sheep, they are in the Netherlands. And this one is dyed blue. I, I'm not really sure how they dye their yarn, actually. But I feel like this set and this set is probably going to be something beautiful like um, well, these three together and these two together are probably going to make some lovely mittens at some point and uh, it's not particularly soft but I just love it because it's, it's Dutch yarn and I love having Dutch yarn and inspiration struck me I may need <laughs> significantly more of this yarn because I have this idea and I think that this yarn might just be perfect for it. So Saskia and Ingrid, I may need to order some more yarn of this because I think this is perfect for an idea that I have had in my mind for a long time and it's going to be very fitting I think. Yeah, I, I'm just in love with this yarn. Let's just face it and you will see more of it. I hope soon. I really hope soon. I'm Sometimes I wonder why my brain always gets these ideas of what I can do with yarn when I'm back home and don't have the opportunity to go and buy some more. Although I do have opportunity to go to the festival again tomorrow and purchase more, but um, well, I don't think I will because tomorrow is my boyfriend's birthday and I don't think he will like it a lot if I just spend the entire day hanging around the fiber events and purchasing even more yarn. Anyway, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that these are going to grow up to be lovely things and I'm hoping to design something with this yarn. Um, but I will need to write inspiration, but I do have inspiration now, so. <sighs> Finish this podcast first, this, but you can't <laughs> just drop everything and start making a, a design. But I really need some pencil and, <laughs> and some paper and draw up my design because it's going to be color work, spoiler. But you can do a lot of color work. Um, then I said that there were going to be some purchases that I would show you that are going to last a long time. Well, there's two different types of those. And let me first get to the book type purchases because I've purchased four books <laughs> recently.
really I did I need four more books than my bookshelf for knitting books which is behind me you can't really see it because I always sit in front of it but trust me my uh, knitting book stash is behind me and um, yeah. first of all um, let's start in the order that I decided I needed them so first of all I came across this book which is 200 Ferile designs and I know that I came across this book in Scotland just two weeks ago and I was considering should I buy it and I thought no it's going to be heavy in our suitcase and I don't really need it and as soon as I walked out of the store I was like damn it I should have purchased that book so um, yeah I'm I'm really happy to have it here now and well I I think this this is a page that I could show you but here's just an impression of the kind of designs that are in here and it's just lovely and I think it's incredibly useful because I'm intending to to make some sweaters in the future and I, I just love how they do this in the ferrule tradition they shift colors so fast you can see it's just a simple pattern but in just the shift of colors give, gives it so much more depth and I love that I, I love it I don't know if I have it in me to design something that shifts color that fast but it's beautiful and I knew that I should have purchased it two weeks ago and I regretted not having purchased it so this was an easy one uh, I saw it and I needed to take it with me so that's one book then one of my friends that I went to the event with uh, held up this book, Shetland Lace Shawls. Do I need a lot of shawls? No. Do I like lace? Yes. So uh, yeah, I kind of needed this book as well. So I'm not particularly interested in the shapes, but just the lace patterns and the charts. And I'm not really sure what all else is in here, but I intend to design some more garments in the near future. Uh, using lace and you can never have enough stitch dictionaries um, that have some lace in, in there so I'm intending to use it mostly as a kind of stitch dictionary I'm not really sure if that's how this book can be used and then there's one more book and this is the Silk Road Socks book by Hunter Hammerson and I know that Hunter Hammerson is a designer who has made some very intricate stitches and I know that there's a hat pattern by her that I've been wanting to cast on for quite a while never got around to it but I don't think I've even purchased a pattern yet but I really want to knit it at some point and I know that she has some intricate stitches and you can kind of see from the front cover of this book that there are some very delicate cable kind of I, I'm not sure if the, these are cables I obviously haven't read the book yet it, it looks quite intricate and I like that I, I do know that I've also just said that I need easy socks but Sometimes I also need more <laughs> than just easy socks. So uh, here I have a book full of patterns um, to make me some more intricate socks. And I love that. And then another project uh, or, or book for another type of project that, and actually a technique that I still have not really tried. And I, I'm not afraid that I can't do any technique. I'm pretty sure that I can learn it. I don't think knitting is scary. You, if anything, you need to rip back a bit and, and continue from there. And if you end up with a tangled mess, you just may have to say goodbye to some lovely yarn, but that's really all that's going to happen to you. So in that sense, I don't think knitting is scary at all. So I purchased this book with brioche, brioche uh, patterns and um, it should contain some steps on how to, to get started and how to do the kind of cable-y sh shifting type patterns in brioche as well. 
and I've never really tried that and I want to try it because it looks interesting. For some reason I'm not particularly attracted to brioche but I really want to have tried knitting brioche. I want to be able to say that I've done brioche and I feel like I keep on postponing doing any brioche and I should actually try it. Maybe I'll love it. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, you guys, brioche is a thing and I want to try it. So here's a book that should help me. Uh, so books are very long lasting things, I guess. So I hope to enjoy those very, for a very long time. And there's also been another purchase that I, I hope that I will enjoy for a long time. First one that I may not enjoy for <laughs> such a long time. But I've purchased knitting needles, six of them. They came in sets of two. And these are very sharp and tiny needles. They are 0 0.7 millimeters. And uh, some people, and there, there was this one booth where they had the, these really tiny knitted animals and uh, clothes and, and as accessories for, for those. And um, I'm not particularly interested in making such tiny animals but I just want to be able to make something with these tiny needles and I don't happen to come across such small needles very often so I thought let's just purchase them now and uh, well we'll see if I ever get to using them but if I don't use them well they don't take up a lot of space because they're very very small so uh, yeah my newest set of knitting needles. I may need to hold them all the way here and I think there's just a tiny piece of felt to kind of just keep the needles together because otherwise you would probably lose them and I kind of got them in an envelope because otherwise they would probably already be bent or or broken or something or just poking through my, my bag. So yeah, six needles. I don't need six needles I think but I wanted to be able to knit in around if I ever got around to trying this and I know that you can knit in the round with four needles but I prefer knitting with five needles and they came in sets of two so I kind of needed to purchase six. I got a discount on that because apparently not many people buy that many needles at once. Anyway, um, uh, speaking of uh, buy more needles, I also purchased this kit of Chow Gu needles. So I got a wonderful gift in June, July-ish of this year uh, of a set of Chow Gu needles and I've been in love with those needles ever since. And I wanted to expand my collection of Chow Gu needles so I now have the small set. So far I've only had the sizes triple zero, US triple zero to one and a half, so 1.5 millimeter to 2.5 millimeter those sizes and I've already expanded my collection with the shorter uh, needles so they had very short tips for the um, the short circular uh, sock knitting and now I've expanded my collection upwards with the 2.75 millimeter to 5 millimeter and that's US um, US 2 to US 8 I believe it should be on here yeah 2 to 8 um, in US sizes and uh, it should contain some cables and, and everything to get me going so I'm really excited to have these out of Chowgu. Did I really need them? No, because I have a set of high high sharps that covers the exact same range of knitting needles. But do I want them anyway? Yes. I'm not really sure if it does contain a three millimeter needle actually. I'm not really sure. I will figure out. Uh, anyway, uh, I yeah I added this to my collection and uh, I obviously hope to enjoy knitting with these needles for a very long time. I also made sure to purchase some additional connectors for my mini cables to the large needle tips so that I can use all of my cables that are small enough for all the larger needles as well. Uh, I thought that would come in handy at some point. Whew. 
Yeah, I think that's everything that I've had to share with you. And I'm sorry if you don't like Inquisition kind of podcasts that I've had two in a row now. But I don't think I will be purchasing a lot more in the near future. Except that I have also kind of ordered the sweaters quantity for knitting for my boyfriend. And a pullover for my boyfriend from my local yarn shop. Yeah, there will be more stash acquisitions, but that will only be just one type of yarn. So maybe that's not that bad. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm purchasing so much lately. I really don't need to enhance my stash anymore. So this is my stream of shameful consciousness. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining me this week. It really means a lot that you keep on coming back to this podcast and uh, yeah, uh, hear me talk about yarn and apparently also about my yarn acquisitions and my process of making yarn and using it. Anyway, I hope you guys have a lovely week and I hope to see you again next week. And after next week, I don't know when I will see you again, but we will see. So, uh, have a lovely week. Bye.